Welcome to another episode of One Trading Book Per Day. Today we're diving into a book that's a little different from the usual investing manuals or stock market guides. We're talking about Poor Charlie's Almanac, a compilation of wisdom from Charles T. Munger, the vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, and Warren Buffett's right-hand man. While not a trading book in the conventional sense, Poor Charlie's Almanac offers invaluable insights into the mindset and principles that can make one a better investor and, frankly, a more well-rounded individual. Now, you may be wondering, what's an almanac? The term is an old-school way to describe a yearly publication containing useful information like weather forecasts, recipes, poems, and more. Munger's book, however, is more of a life's compilation than a yearly summary. It includes his speeches, insights, and a thorough look into his philosophies. And today, we're going to dig into some of its most enlightening sections that have deep implications for traders and investors. In Poor Charlie's Almanac, one of the most compelling ideas presented is what Charles T. Munger refers to as elementary, worldly wisdom. This concept advocates for a broad, multidisciplinary approach to thinking and problem-solving. Munger stresses the importance of having an array of mental models from diverse fields, ranging from physics and biology to psychology, history, and even literature. But you might be wondering, how does a well-rounded intellectual toolkit relate specifically to the realm of investing? Munger's answer to this is both nuanced and transformative. He argues that possessing a multidisciplinary framework allows for a more rational, comprehensive decision-making process. When you approach investment decisions, or any decisions for that matter, with a varied set of mental models, you're better equipped to see the complexities and interconnections that a single discipline focus might overlook. For example, understanding the basics of psychology can offer insights into market behavior, while a grasp of history can help you recognize economic cycles or the significance of particular financial events. This concept of elementary worldly wisdom does more than just enhance your investment acumen. It also profoundly influences how you tackle challenges and opportunities in every facet of your life. Whether you're navigating a career change, resolving a personal conflict, or even choosing a health plan, applying a multidisciplinary lens can offer valuable perspectives that you may not have considered otherwise. The next key point is the idea of inversion. This idea asks us to flip our approach to problem-solving and decision-making on its head. Typically, we direct our energies toward identifying pathways to success, focusing on what steps need to be taken to achieve our desired outcomes. While this is undoubtedly essential, Munger suggests that this is only one side of the coin. According to him, it is equally crucial to contemplate the ways to avoid failure. In doing so, we can sidestep the traps and pitfalls that often undermine success, especially in the volatile world of investing. To illustrate, let's say you're considering investing in a particular stock. The conventional approach would have you calculate the potential upsides, the company's growth prospects, market share, and profitability. However, applying the concept of inversion, you would also intensely scrutinize what could go wrong. Does the company have too much debt? Is it too reliant on a single revenue stream? Are there looming regulatory concerns? By asking these questions, you can identify red flags that could indicate a high-risk investment. This inverted thinking serves as a mental check, a safeguard against the all-too-human tendencies toward overconfidence and confirmation bias. It forces us to consider alternative viewpoints and to think in terms of contingencies and worst-case scenarios. Such a method helps us build a fuller, more nuanced understanding of the situation at hand, thereby leading to more robust decision-making strategies. But Munger isn't all about theory. He provides real-world examples to illustrate these concepts. One of the most compelling illustrations of this is the investment approach employed by Berkshire Hathaway, the multinational conglomerate where Munger serves as vice chairman. Rather than diversifying into any and every industry, 
Berkshire Hathaway exercises remarkable restraint by consciously steering clear of specific sectors and types of businesses. Berkshire Hathaway's avoidance strategy is rooted in what Munger calls circle of competence, the idea that investors should stick to industries or sectors they deeply understand. As a result, the company avoids high-risk sectors like biotechnology or businesses with complicated structures and unproven revenue models as they fall outside of their established areas of expertise. Instead, Berkshire Hathaway focuses on sectors such as insurance, utilities, and consumer goods, areas where Munger and Warren Buffett, the company's chairman, have accrued years of knowledge and experience. This risk-averse strategy essentially functions as a protective moat around the company's investment decisions, filtering out opportunities that might look appealing at first glance but carry hidden or poorly understood risks. For example, while the allure of high-tech startups and their exponential growth rates might tempt many, Berkshire Hathaway usually steers clear because of the industry's inherent volatility and the company's limited core competence in that area. By narrowing their focus, Berkshire Hathaway doesn't just reduce risks, it also allocates its time and resources more effectively. Management can scrutinize potential acquisitions or investments more thoroughly, conduct more accurate due diligence, and ultimately, make better informed decisions. This disciplined approach has contributed substantially to Berkshire Hathaway's long-term success. The company's performance, characterized by sustained growth and market leadership, speaks to the efficacy of this risk-averse strategy. Berkshire Hathaway has not just survived market downturns. It has often capitalized on them to acquire assets at bargain prices, precisely because its conservative approach keeps it from getting entangled in high-risk, high-failure sectors in the first place. Another compelling aspect of Poor Charlie's Almanac is its focus on ethics and integrity. Munger stresses that while financial gain is a legitimate goal, it should not be pursued at the expense of ethical considerations. For him, being ethical is not just the right thing to do, it's also the smart thing to do in business. He argues that a reputation for fair dealing can be one of your most valuable assets in the long run. Now, let's talk about a subject dear to traders, risk. Munger's perspective on risk is deeply influenced by his multidisciplinary approach. Munger is less concerned with short-term volatility or market swings. Instead, his primary focus is on the structural integrity of the investment itself. He urges investors to understand the fundamentals of the businesses they are investing in, and to consider the long-term prospects and integrity of the company. By doing so, you can better assess the likelihood of permanent capital loss, which is the real risk in Munger's view. This nuanced understanding of risk helps investors sidestep the pitfalls of reactionary trading, leading to more informed and ultimately safer investment choices. In Poor Charlie's Almanac, Charles Munger delves deeply into the psychology of human misjudgment, offering a masterclass on the cognitive biases and errors that frequently skew investment decisions. Munger doesn't merely list these biases. He dissects them, explaining their origins and their pervasive impact on decision-making, in both investing and other areas of life. One of the biases Munger addresses is overconfidence a cognitive pitfall that leads investors to overestimate their abilities or the accuracy of their forecasts. This sense of inflated self-worth can lead to dangerous behavior, like excessive trading, high leverage, or inadequate diversification, often culminating in significant financial losses. Munger advises that understanding one's limitations and incorporating a margin of safety in investment decisions can mitigate the adverse effects of overconfidence. Another bias is the social proof tendency, which is the psychological phenomenon where people mimic the actions of a group under the belief that the collective knows better. In investment terms, this herd mentality can result in asset bubbles, as everyone rushes to invest in the next big thing, often without doing adequate due diligence. 
Munger emphasizes the importance of independent thinking and investing, advising that one should be able to articulate their reasoning for making a specific investment free from the influence of popular opinion. Munger argues that the key to overcoming these and other cognitive pitfalls lies in self-awareness. He believes that by identifying these biases within ourselves, we can develop counter-strategies to neutralize them. For instance, maintaining a decision-making journal could help an investor identify recurring patterns of bias in their investment choices. Similarly, using checklists can force an investor to slow down and consider a more comprehensive set of factors before making a decision. What's also noteworthy is how Munger views the role of patience and discipline in investing. He often quotes the adage, the stock market is designed to transfer money from the active to the patient. For Munger, the idea is not to make money every day, but to make well-reasoned investments that will pay off in the long run. In this sense, Munger's philosophy aligns well with the concept of value investing, a strategy that involves picking stocks that appear to be trading for less than their intrinsic or book value. But Munger goes beyond mere financial metrics and ratios. He believes in understanding the qualitative aspects of a company, such as the quality of the management team, the competitive advantage, and the business model. In summary, Poor Charlie's Almanac isn't just a book about investing. It's a book about how to think, how to live, and how to make decisions both big and small. Munger's wisdom transcends the world of finance and penetrates into the philosophies of life, making it an invaluable resource for anyone interested in the complexities of human thought, the financial markets, or life itself. If you haven't read Poor Charlie's Almanac, I highly recommend you get your hands on a copy. It's one of those books you'll find yourself returning to time and again, each time with a fresh perspective and newfound wisdom. Thank you for joining me today on One Trading Book Per Day. If you found this episode insightful, don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a review. Until the next time, keep reading and keep investing wisely.